on tonight's episode of Side Stage with the IVGO, we welcome the orchestra's conductors. Yeah, speaking of, okay, well, some of us aren't educated, Robert. <laughs> Things go a little awry. Oh, oh, yeah, there's a clown here. I thought that was a coaster. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this happens. One final thing I need you to do for me. I need you to whip out your buttons. Join us tonight. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Side Stage with the IVGO. My name is Lisa, you will know me from the previous episodes. You will also know Robert Luke Martin. Hello. Keith Milligan. Hello to both cameras. To both cameras. And now for somebody you are yet to meet but who is very important to the orchestra, <laughs> our special guest, David Bennington. I feel like you, you stressed very important there. Um. <laughs> I did. Just but but not in the good way. Every single person on this podcast is a VIP, okay? Oh, well, I appreciate that. It's great to be here. And why is that, Lisa? Because every person, aside from me, on this <laughs> podcast episode <laughs> is a conductor of the IVGO. Ooh. Good segue, Robert, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. I try. <laughs> so we're going to try on rattle through this episode, see what we can, information we can share with you all. But I think there's a very important question to start off with. And I think that question is, how the hell did you all get into conducting? And I would quite like to start with our musical director. So Robert, let's start with you, buddy. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we dodged a bullet I've there. Got like, yeah. I've got like the longest story out of all of us. That's why I came to you first. Yeah, that, that's fair. <laughs> Size doesn't matter. So let's see. It all started... Keith, it's too early for this. <laughs> Sorry, Robert. Go ahead on it. I missed that, and we're just going to let it go. you hear okay. the actual edits. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. Uh, it starts all back in high school, uh, which I forget what the Northern Irish equivalent of that is i believe it's also pretty high school. much is just high school is but it still high school for you people for us it would be senior school in a way it's, it's american high school but with a lot less drama yeah <laughs> mm, you say that but still i've heard stories make tv out of method, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um uh back in high school so uh the the band program was very important in our school we had one of the largest uh marching bands back in uh back in maryland um i think we had something like 180 members which for high school is just massive wow and we weren't really a parade kind of band we did a lot of in the states there we do marching bands do a lot of field shows which are like the halftime shows during uh football games american football yeah. hand egg if you will <laughs> and uh there's always a, a conductor drum major dude who's kind of like at the front keeping time and uh seeing my brother in the band uh while i was in middle school so when i was probably like 12 or 13 i'm watching the band and i'm like yeah i think i'll do that <laughs> and basically all through high school worked my way up to being the conductor for that group um and then after two years of doing that in high school uh, when I went to college, when I did my undergrad, I uh, learned how to actually conduct, um, because conducting and being a drum major are two very different things. Yeah. And then uh, from college, I ended up starting an orchestra to get more experience, um, and then went to grad school and started at the IVGO to get more experience and to do other I fun stuff. I gotta say... Like, the only person who could pull that off is probably you, Robert. It's just like, I need more experience. I know. I'm going to start my own orchestra. <laughs> not, like, approach other orchestras. But, you know, you'd actually be surprised. It's actually a very common thing to do. Yeah, really? It really isn't. Um, among, um, <laughs> I mean, among conductors. Probably in America, but not here. Among yeah. conductors who need more experience or want to break into that field, they'll start their own ensembles. That's the best way to do it. That's really interesting. Yeah, well, because you're not going to let somebody who doesn't know anything to stand in front of a professional orchestra. It doesn't work. But what about Keith? They just... Ha-ha! <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just. I just had to get the first well, dig not... in because I know I'm going to be slaughtered later. 
we're, we're not quite professional now, are we? <laughs> Don't worry, David, you're not Adam. Adam gets a lot of abuse on this podcast because he's never here. <laughs> oh, Adam. Uh, <laughs> and then, so from from the IVGO, I ended up doing, uh, well, not ended up doing, um, pursued a master's degree in conducting. Um, because undergrad degrees in conducting don't exist except for like two schools in the states and even then i highly recommend that you don't do them i was gonna ask that question because i've never seen a course ever that's just like this is a course about conducting and i never thought it was that hard a job i'm really sorry <laughs> you know I mean? but it's like, amazing I understood how much easier it, was. Yeah. it looks then if you're good it makes it look e- or you make it look easy yeah and then there's us and it's just yeah. sweat buckets every time but i do it <laughs> oh yeah you have I to mean, but it, it does also... it looks i mean on the, on the face of it it does look like you're just waving yeah. a stick and being like and shouting at the the second violins and the violas um, <gasps> oh, the violas. it's always the violas <sighs> ah, violas amazing. deserve what they get um, because I made that comment, I think Robert will make sure it is always the violas from here on out. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yep. I snookered myself. You've just screwed yourself for the next two years. <laughs> yep. By the way, guys, I'm leaving IVGO tonight. <laughs> no, oh, please no, don't. I, I would never do that. I would never. Um, but yes. So explain to me what happens in a master's in conducting. Oh, Lord. Um so very briefly if possible (laughs) yeah so the biggest thing beyond the actual like work that you have to do behind it um the biggest thing is that you're basically the assistant conductor for whatever ensembles that you're covering um so you're you're um you're shadowing the the ensemble's conductor Mm -hmm. you're covering for them when they're not there they're also your um they're also your private teacher, so you do take conducting lessons like you would piano lessons um, to learn proper form. And uh, a lot of it is physicality, but a lot of it is also, you know, we're going to sit here and we're going to score study for an hour and talk about this piece and, like, figure out what's going on and what you're going to do, what, how you're going to do this. Um, how are you going to convey this information in a, uh, in a sight reading session? Um, so really when you go back to your master's work, you're really paying to be put in front of a very good ensemble for two years is essentially the idea. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, I mean, there's some coursework, there's a lot of studying, but, uh, yeah, most of it is to get that like (laughs) in person on the stand experience. David and or Keith, did you have an experience like that with getting into conducting yourselves? Was it quite straightforward like that? Like moving through <laughs> the conducting kind of thing? I mean, we, we've been listening to Robert um, give off this this amazing story of, of how he's actually been educated properly. And yeah. we've been looking like side eye at each other being like, yeah. did we, I mean, we're saying like it makes it, <laughs> if you're a good conductor, it makes it look like you just wave your arms. I think both of us essentially we're just taught okay here's how you wave your arms oh you were taught wow i will i wasn't actually i wasn't actually taught until like the jet six months after i started to be fair i think the only <laughs> thing i was taught was you you put your hand this no this way instead of this way for the outbeat i don't know i can't remember the upbeat's up whatever One, two, three. <laughs> so is for all the audio <laughs> listeners uh keith is waving his hand backward and forwards left or right yeah, this is oh. a podcast isn't it oh <laughs> It's already off the bad start. Uh, yeah, I I mean, I got into it because um, Robert abandoned us. Hold up. I got kicked out of the oh. country. You, you did not get kicked out. We would never ask somebody as magnificent as you to Drama. leave. I was not. Okay, I wasn't kicked out. I was not permitted to stay. I did not <laughs> abandon you. <laughs> anyway. This um, is why, what was it, episode two or episode three, you were really trying to get a marriage proposal from somebody who lived in the UK. I mean, I think he still sure is. that was you, Lisa. <laughs> I'm not naming names. <laughs> it's still cheaper than a PhD. Anyway. True. So I think I think I maybe started with the IVGO. I, mean, I wasn't I, I, there bit, whenever it started, so I don't know why you're asking me. No, I mean conducting wise. I think you were there whenever I started conducting. Oh really? Oh, okay. I think you might have been. Was that in the wee, the top of the wee room? Were you there for that? Um, 
Yeah, for like a bit. 20 flights of stairs. Yeah, that was Yeah, fun. so you, you would have been there. <clears throat> pardon me. Your pardon me. Um, whenever I conducted properly. Properly. For the first time ever. <laughs> and it was really because we just didn't, we didn't have enough people to do it. Um, and I was right. Okay, how are we going to keep the orchestra alive? And I was like, ah, give it a go. <laughs> sure, how hard can it be? And I seriously uh, thought, how hard can it be? Last words. It kind of is because of, yeah. Yeah. So Although, much going through your head at any one time. It's. I mean, it's, yeah. incre- it's an incredible, it's an incredible amount of fun though. Like it's, mm. I wouldn't want to say it's more fun than being a trumpet player because you have to be a lot more sober. Do you? Um, <laughs> usually. It's like, I, there's sort of a, min- a minimum beer level to play the trumpet. Mm. Um, there's probably a maximum beer level to be able to walk on stage and not trip over everything. That's true. To get to the very front. Mm. Fun fact about drunk conducting. Uh, for our fans listening, go back and watch if if we have video footage Don't. of it. <laughs> uh, the Sonic thing from QCon a couple of years ago. Oh God! Please I don't. don't. Know. I think we're going to cut that. Yeah, we're probably going to cut that. Is going to explode. Robert has his face in his hands. You what? <laughs> yeah. I sent that video to QCon to use for their Twitch thing. <laughs> oh God! That's amazing. <laughs> The fact that Wait, was you, the that fact the same? That you didn't was that realize... the same day that Holly was like completely flat out? Yeah, that was the one on her back. Okay, we're definitely no. cutting this then. No, <laughs> this welcome, Daddy Jo. After dark. <laughs> yeah, that was surprising. <laughs> uh, you know what? Fair, fair that play. That was a fun show. I don't think she'll do that again. <laughs> Granted, she had Sorry, just Ollie. she had just turned eighteen. Like that was she learn. should have been that used to her, it by then. That was her due. I, I'm the one who should have known better. <laughs> Yeah, why didn't you know better? <laughs> How dare you? Because it was. I fun. think Keith chooses not to know better. Granted, that was also the same show that Brian and Pete came back late during intermission oh, from yes. the parlor. Brian being same my show. father. <laughs> yes, Father Brian. <laughs> that was a Father Brian. Can show. we start calling him Father Brian? I think we have to at this stage. Oh, that would be brilliant, Father Brian. <laughs> He'd hate that. He would hate that. So what I so far learnt is that to conduct, you either need a master's degree or you need to get drunk. That's about the same, yeah. So I think we need a little bit more clarification here on what actually goes into conducting an orchestra, whether it be a big orchestra or a small orchestra. What does a conductor actually do? Waves her arms and prays. (laughs) I mean, the, the the responsibility for the orchestra, for the conductor, sorry, not the orchestra, geez. The, or, the orchestra is going to make it a great show. The responsibility of a conductor, from how I see it, is you are in charge of making damn sure everyone plays the right notes, mm-hmm. the right way, mm-hmm. at the right time. Exactly. And you look good when you're doing it. Oh, of course. You've got to have a great ass. That's the main thing. Hope it works. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like 98% hope. Uh, it might be ninety eight percent hope and practice, but like by the time you get to actually performing, um, you kind of you don't you don't hope anymore. Like you, you know what yeah. people are going to do, you know what to be worried about, and you know who to look at, and who to, who to, who is going to need maybe a little bit of help to make sure that they they know where they are. Like the viola section, like the viola section. Well, to be fair, I actually was going to say, i.e., the viola section in was it when we were doing the Spider Man piece a while ago. Oh yeah, and we did not have a clue, and I think it was. Both you, Keith and David, both tried to conduct in that one, and I just remember going, "See, whenever that comes up, look at me, <laughs> please, because I need help." That that's actually quite a good segue into, <clears throat> pardon me again, geez, about how we we have to prepare and know the score and every part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For that, you know, a normal person who's playing an instrument, they know roughly what's going on in other sections, but like the part they know is their own. Yeah, that's the only thing they really see. Like they know everything else just by ear more than anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. As a player, you listen for basically the lead in to your next section of playing or who's playing with you and who am I supposed to be in tune with if there's harmonies and stuff going on. But like the actual running of people's scores or the music in front of them, I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, so if you look at certainly at any of the scores that I've marked, um, and I know Robert does exactly the same because I copied it from him, uh, there is... <laughs> an artist's impression of colouring pencil all over the thing <laughs> for what's happening because you, you, you can't you can't physically read every instrument every line for every instrument and every bar and be able to count and know exactly when everything's coming in because I mean that's impossible I've only got speak one brain speak for yourself Spe- <laughs> okay well some of us aren't educated Robert <laughs> 
not even just educated in conducting, just educated in general. Yeah, what? Well, I mean, <laughs> you've met David, like, what do you expect? Oh, Keith, you're sitting across from him. He could actually throw something at you He's if he wanted you to. He's giving you wine. What's wrong with I you? I brought my own wine. He did bring his own wine. Where... I also brought mother's shortbread. I don't know Ooh. if you saw. Oh, your, your mother's shortbread? Hmm? Your mother's shortbread? Oh, yes. I may have a, a bite at your mother's biscuit later. Oh, please do. I'm sure she'd enjoy <laughs> <laughs> so Robert Robert She's this is the point where we both say uh, we're not allowed to have David and Keith in the same room ever again this is what happens at concerts too like this is nothing <laughs> new anyway segue back let's come back to it I, I kind of forget how we got into the fact that I scribble like a toddler over all the scores um, in different colours meaning different things but I do well, as you say, it's like, if it was me, if the idea is like you're highlighting who has the main line at this point and who has either a counterpoint melody or something that's really atmospheric underneath it. If it was me, I'd be like out with highlighters, like going, look at this person here, highlight that part of the score. If it was me in my no knowledge area of conducting, trying to work it out. I have never thought of using highlighters. That would have, yeah, ooh. It's not great. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well. The educated one has spoken. <laughs> yeah, the king has spoken. <laughs> Do you think like orchestras, it must be the same for big orchestras, not just ours. You're like, we do it in colouring pencil. Like obviously, like maybe not everyone does it in colouring pencil, but there has to be big orchestras, big conductors who have to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. I should probably ask um, the guy I know and I'm going to try and not name any names, but there's a guy I know who Ooh. orchestrates for large orchestras and records in Abbey Road. So I should probably ask him and see what he does. Yes, please. <laughs> Very mysterious. Well, I, I, don't, I don't want to name drop in case he gets annoyed that I haven't spoken to him in uh, a, number of, a number of years. Just talk to him for tips. Yeah, that's, that's like, all, hey, that's hey. That's all he is to you now, just a walking. Hey, hey Mr. X, uh, you know, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> But Robert, is that maybe why it's good that you may disagree with me here, but do you think it's good that it's not always you standing in front of us, that Keith and David both come in and conduct in different pieces, that it changes the sound for the orchestra? Um... <laughs> He's like, I <laughs> oh, wish, I was, I wish it was only me. <laughs> I wish it was just me all the time. I know you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Very convincing. <laughs> um well i was gonna say i think um it really depends it, it, i mean having an having a new set of ears on the piece is always a good thing because people are going to hear other things um mm-hmm. like david will know for sure when the brass are screwing up or doing yeah. great you may just highlight the whole keith, line <laughs> yeah keith, <laughs> keith keith will uh Keith will keep an eye on the win- on the uh, wind players. Like um, conductors will always, um, especially especially the the not big conductors. Conductors will always like fall back on what they know, and yeah. so whatever instrument that they started playing, that's the one that's going to get the most attention during a rehearsal. Mm-hmm. That's why I always say I don't I don't think I could conduct and I, even when i'm trying to arrange pieces i have to be like i know that part isn't in the viola so i have to put it somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> trying to be careful because you do tend i would lean on strings because i know how strings and string sectionals work mm-hmm. i would ha- i'd be clueless about i could do the basics of a wind or a brass sectional but I'd, I'd be clueless oh it's really easy just give the most gorgeous melody to the french horns and you'll be fine Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> All the you, many French horns that you, we have. You heard the theme for this podcast. Like, that's exactly what I did. If, yeah. if you want stormtroopers, it's go. the trombones. Oh, if yeah. you want shock and awe, it's the trumpets. If you want something lovely, it's the French horns. And brass. <laughs> yeah. Just, that's all you need for an orchestra. Just brass. <laughs> I know, again, I'm not going to name drop, but they will know who they are if they're listening to this. I actually know uh, two French horn players who are, um, they're in a relationship and living together. And one of them is baritone horn and the other one's tenor. And they're just constantly like, send us jet pieces. Like, we want to play. <laughs> like, And why haven't they joined the orchestra yet? Yeah, where are they? Yeah, why haven't they joined yet? Because they're in like every other orchestra in the world. Like, <laughs> so, that's an so. excuse. So we need ringers. I'm okay with that. I have no, tried. That, I have fair. tried. 
Um, but they're just never available to come to shows because I did ask them. Remember for uh, the now uh, this goes to show how bad my memory is. Um, in November when we played Low in church. the church, yeah. yeah, that's the one. Um, for Extra Life, that's the, I asked them to come and play at that, but neither of them were free. So mm. I have been trying. But anyway, back to topic. Right. Keep things moving, guys. We're keeping things moving. So, in terms of actually, like, we know here's what goes into it. Now it's, you've got to, you're not just standing in front of us waving your arms. What is the most difficult part of conducting? Might be the best way for me to ask that question. Ooh. Keith, you've been very quiet. I think it's your turn to, to bestow upon us some wisdom. And also, I want to know what makes you I mean, this is the hardest question. Um, Because, I mean, it sort of, it depends on... The person who's Robert's doing the conducting. looking at his screen with a face yeah. waiting to see what this response is. Oh, dear. Because I'm going to take this and turn it around on him next time he has a lesson with me. <laughs> Which, by the way, you didn't have, you were supposed to have a lesson with me last summer and you didn't, jerk. Oh. All right. Uh, David got Our teacher and Robert is coming out. <laughs> I did, and that lesson was incredibly helpful. Oh. Yo, Kate that's you at his butthole. <laughs> Teacher's oh, wow. at the other end of the table. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So, Keith, what's the most difficult part about conducting? I mean, it does, to be fair, I think depend on the person doing the conducting. Like, someone may find time signatures that are not normal difficult. So, like, you know, the normal ones being the 4-4, four, four, the 3-4, something like that. Mm. Whereas something like... um in the Witcher piece that we started playing and then had to stop because the plague happened. Um, that was at the very start of that piece. There was a oh whole thing of goodness. that, which was five, four, six, four alternating oh bars, which, yeah, David <laughs> yeah. is <laughs> looking very like, scared. It's more than four. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that type of thing, to be fair, like that's, if it's hard for the conductor, it's hard for the players and that type of thing anyway. I'm pretty sure we had an arrangement of that piece that was also in it had the me and melody in like seven four. We and probably I was like, did. that melody's in four four. And I was like, why do we make this so complicated on ourselves? Because like it's you can Adam. hear it. <laughs> <laughs> <It's true. laughs> Sorry, Adam. I think we should we should maybe we should maybe ask Adam to conduct for a week. Just one of one of his yes, awkward please. time things. Just that's Can I be oh. there for that? That's our welcome back <laughs> treat to ourselves. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like Happy Christmas, Keith and David. <laughs> Love the IVTO. Yeah. I'm so no, that, that. That, that's yes, not please. fair. That's not fair, but I do want to see it. I, I mean, it's not fair, it. but it's funny, so we're doing it. Yeah. So you find that you find the, t the technical stuff harder? Yeah, I mean, it's also a sort of... Um, you have to know when to stop banging on about a certain bit, I think. Oh god, yeah. Like, because you could, I mean, realistically, if there's one bar that's going terribly in a piece, you could spend all night in that. But if it's yeah. like, say that bar is only, as it usually is, it's only in the violas and they're the ones messing up. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Keith, Keith, Burn. I'm the editor. Be careful. <laughs> you say this every week, but it's I not going to happen. I just start stringing word. I start, but here's what's going to start happening. I'm, I'm going to start listening through your entire audio file, start stringing words together, and you're going to get, I am a huge dick, <laughs> and all these varying pitches. I mean, yeah, we've I... already talked about my mother's biscuit. I think I've suffered enough already in this podcast. <laughs> Back to the topic. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's, a very valid, that's a very valid point, actually. Um... My mother's biscuit? <laughs> No, geez, the <laughs> the people aspect of conducting, which is completely nothing to do with conducting at all. Mm -hmm. I've been in a situation as a player where um, there was, in this concert band I'm in, um, there was a part where I think the saxophones weren't doing well. Typical. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, the conductor at the time basically spent the entire uh, like sort of post-break of the rehearsal just focusing on their section so the rest of us were just sitting there with our instruments like yep anytime so like it's a case <laughs> of yeah. you have to recognize whenever something isn't going to get any better in the rehearsal and you'd sort of send it away for them to practice which i mean mm. is what? Yeah, yeah well that's an issue in and of itself but that's <laughs> we're not going to get into that one mm -hmm. 
funny you say that because I'll tell you a story and I am going to say what orchestra this was in. So anybody who's listening who knows, they know who this conductor is. But for <laughs> it. Um, when I was in CBYO. I was going to say, is this <gasps> the, CBYO, the CBYO. Who was conducting when you were there? Paul McBride. Oh, I've heard stories. I... But see, he was also the principal of my school at the time. But it was him who actually asked me to join the orchestra because they needed more violas to play rack man and not second. And... I mean, it was the best experience during that year, but it was the next year and we were playing the Voltava. And there's a lot of that that's quite hard for the violas. Um, and I was the oldest and there was another guy who was really, really good. Um, and a few people who were like sort of the same level playing as I would be. I You can make of that what you will. Um, and then there was a lot of younger ones. So I was like the mummy of the section and he made us stand up in twos and play like these six bars until we got it right I oh, think I it was oh, doing that and it was so awful and i like it got worse and worse because people get more nervous and yeah. frustrated because they know i just need to go and practice it and you're making me feel bad about it and i remember going up at the end of the rehearsal and just being like listen here <laughs> that we were oh you didn't did you like, wow Oh, I did. Oh, I did. Good I was for like, you. that's never going to help. And uh, the next week when I went back, I got an apology. So <laughs> I've never seen Angry yeah. Lisa before, but I think she would be very scary. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. <laughs> I was probably in the concert band at the same time that you were in the youth orchestra. Oh, that was about five, six years ago. Oh, okay. No, this is longer. You're so old. I'm no, rather but seven aged. years ago, actually, but seven years ago. Yeah, I was going to say, David, you're the old one here. Oh, what year is it? 2020? Uh... The one that's not me. Okay, no, a bit more than that. <laughs> yeah, seven years ago, I think it was 2013. My fun fact that always really just, I used to remind David about his age, is that he left Grosvenor whenever I started. Wow, which is thanks, just, thanks, yeah, Keith. you're very welcome. You're, I don't see, I don't see. means, Keith, that he has more time and experience of conducting than you do. So maybe you should what? talk that's, that's, that's actually incorrect. Um, because Just Keith, you, you conduct other groups as well, don't you? Yeah, I have. David, you could have just accepted that. <laughs> no, no, you gotta, you gotta give, you gotta give the juice. Anyway, in terms of that question, though, because I'm gonna keep coming back around. Yeah. Um, in terms of it being quite, like, I would find it quite mentally taxing to conduct because if, as you say, there's bits that just maybe aren't gonna go right, um, or problems that are gonna happen. Do you ever just go? Is it? Is there a point in me standing here? Uh, <laughs> some weeks. Every every time that I have thought, is there a point in me standing here? I have made damn sure that all of you know that yeah. I am thinking, is there a point of me standing here? That's what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, I also find it mentally taxing when David conducts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Because I demand so much of you. You really do. I know what you're capable of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say, I'm enjoying just watching this whole thing go by right now. Um, We should make a spin-off podcast, just us. I'm kind of sad because I kind of wish I was there. No, it's like, I just wish we could all be in a room doing this podcast because the actual back and forth between two people sitting across the table is hilarious. Um, we, we can look at, we can so look at arranging something um, a larger, at a larger space. I have enough equipment that we could make it work. I'm in LA, you dick. Well, apart from you. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I gonna say you were what were you talking about i forgot how mentally taxing it is oh yeah right let's cycle back to that then um the crux of the question <laughs> i f- think it's fair to say that how things that are difficult in rehearsals are very very diff- different to things that are difficult at performance time yeah yeah like rehearsal time you, you have to worry an awful lot about people's feelings and performance time you have to worry an awful lot about results and yeah. that's it <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like for break rehearsal time, it's, I I find it's all about the instrumentalists themselves, and like performance time, it's like oh please God, make sure I get this three four in the right place. <laughs> Fair. Oh oh, there's a funny story. Oh, dear. There was the, there was this one time when I definitely hadn't had a few pints of Guinness. Um, <laughs> this we were doing a show in. The, I definitely hadn't. Um, we were doing a show in the the black box. Oh yes, was this? It after, was a small group. Was this after the um? string quintet did the star wars and you went yeah off so I, I i i went off stage not to the bar for a while and 
we came back up and it was was it was it uh, White Run? I think so. Yeah, that's on. Yeah, right. I mean, I can remember what we did, so that's pretty good. Um, I started conducting in the wrong time signature. Oh my god! I remember that. I know. Was that the one you had to like, for like, oh, and no. then people started playing, or kept oh, on playing, like. Oh. It was like it was sort of hanging together, but everyone was going what that. Nobody knew what was happening. I didn't know what was happening. I realized like I maybe think you managed to cover it well. ten bars in or something, and I was like, okay, yeah. oh right, oh dear. I think like oh. from the audience perspective, because <laughs> you were able to go stop from the K. Yeah, it's it's like it's. I mean, and this is sort of this is sort of whenever you're doing like so like doing band performances and stuff, it's kind of the same. It's like if you start wrong, you ha- you have a choice. The choice is, do we stop and we say, oh dear. Uh, Sorry about that, folks. Oops. Yeah. And start again properly. Or is is it actually recoverable? And 99% of the time, it's not recoverable because you just got to be like, you know what? This is gone. Nobody knows where we are. And you, you got to... I mean, it's embarrassing, but yeah. it's the only same way. Otherwise, you look stupid. I know that happened to me on stage whenever we were doing the... Um, whichever gig that was, you in the big circus tent. <laughs> oh, um... Yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a great gig. That was very good. Um, but we were doing that God of War. East Side Arts Festival, That's guys. the one. That's, yeah. yep. That That's was it. also only just last year, guys. Yeah. It feels like a long time And we did ago. a podcast episode on it, Kate. <laughs> okay. I've been, have I been drinking for the rest <laughs> of these? <laughs> I'm just calling you out. <laughs> There's a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon over there that I think I'm going to have to have a look at. Oh, we said that very French. Mm. Cabernet Sauvignon. Focus, people. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's you know what? Since we've done that episode, we've probably I've probably already told this, but you know what? I'm just gonna start repeating myself now. Um, we were doing God of War, and we got to the end of it, uh, where it's the epilogue part where it goes fast, mm-hmm. and people just started messing up. Uh, definitely wasn't my fault. Actually, I don't think it was, but whatever. You wrote the piece. It's always your fault. <laughs> I'm going to hold my hand up and say that could have been our fault, I'll be honest. I mean, <laughs> Viola, so yeah. Um, but that was one where I just had to sort of stop, turn around to the audience and say, right, lads, that obviously wasn't supposed to happen. They all clapped, so, you know, I felt pretty good about that. Um, and then we had to start again. And it almost messed up again, but we that, one, that was like the 1% of times whenever it was actually was recoverable. Yeah, and, and it, it does happen. Oh, yeah. And especially when you're working, as well, when you're working with um, with um, non-professional musicians. Yeah. You know, with the non-professional conductors. Sorry, Robert, I'm excluding you from this, obviously. Um, you know, <laughs> things are going to go wrong. And it's, it's just a shame that whenever it's whenever it goes wrong for you, it's a hell of a lot more visible and much more impactful than if something, go, if, if I'm playing the trumpet, for example, and, you know, I miss an entry or, or I, you know, I fluff a note or I fail off, I fall off somewhere. Yeah. I mean, realistically, you've got another trumpet to back you up if you do miss something. But if like, well, one that's of what us... I was gonna say. It's like the only time I think as a player you ever worry about something like that is when you're mic'd individually. Yeah. Like the likes of Standall where the front desks of the strings are mic'd. That's when you worry because you're like, oh god, I know I can't play as a bar right, and I know the conductor's gonna <laughs> look at me when it happens, and yeah. it's gonna be. A I problem. mean, that, that's me- that's, that's mental. The Here's the time. thing, though. The most musicians or like you say, like, oh, the conductor's gonna look at me. That. <laughs> The problem with the with the position of the conductor is that you you don't have just like one person like you know at you. You have an entire hall behind you. You yeah. are ultimately responsible for everything that happens, and I think it's mm-hmm. that is the weight that just kind of like crushes a soul. <laughs> so yeah. it's like it's so wow. You take wrong, this personally? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, just my profession, you know, gig. no big deal. Hello, soul crushers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, no matter what happens, they're not going to be like, oh, the violas are shit. No, they're going to be like, wow, that was bad. The conductor must suck. Like, See, I would never think of it like that, but, but you see, that's, because I that's don't usually how it. That's usually how it goes down, because it's the conductor who is ultimately responsible for yeah. the group. Yeah. And also, you also have then the entire orchestra staring at you as well so i mean like it's not just the eyes going from through the back of your head it's also all the ones looking straight at your face <laughs> as mm. well i don't know I, I kind of enjoy that i find that's quite like it's in it's, part it's, yeah it's like we're a team lads and you, you look around and you know it's the one time whenever everyone's actually going to look at you yeah. 
is just before they start playing in a gig, and then like then all bets are off. Oh yeah, like you do the downbeat, and everyone just goes, just see the top of their heads for the rest. Of it. <laughs> it's head down. I try not to do that because I got that beat out of me by Nicky Johnston when I was in school. Oh, here's another wee name drop. Look at me. Oh. Uh, mm, the one thing I will say, she actually put us all in a chamber orchestra, um, and it was like junior, <laughs> intermediate, senior. I was in all of them. Um, and for one of them, no, I can I remember what the piece was? You know what it actually was? It was Ina Kleina. Um, this is a different story than the one I told previously where we sang our parts instead of actually playing because we thought it'd be funny in the middle of a concert. I just want to hold on while you're still talking. I'm just going to say the boys are grabbing another bottle of wine. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a box of wine. It's not a bottle. It's a box. Um, it's man sized. <laughs> 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 very very classy this is what i get for not actually looking at the screen when i'm talking because i talk my hands and all sorts we all love um, david's box anyway. in this house yeah oh. <laughs> worry. i'm moving on um we were in, it was doing out in the client and we knew it really really well at this point and she was like see this concert that you're playing in the ulster hall i'm not going to conduct you for it you're just going to do it and we all panicked because we'd never played without a conductor before but there's so many chamber orchestras that do that that kind of make it seem like you don't always need a conductor oh so this is something i I hoped we would get into but i always thought in my own head it's like somebody has to be there while the rehearsals are happening before they get to the stage of no conductor I want to hear what David says first, because oh. I have I have my opinion, because um, this will also go into what a conductor actually does, as is listed on our plan. Yep. And I have a oh, oh, yeah, there's a plan right here. Now. I thought that was a coaster. <laughs> 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 okay. I have, I have a lovely rant written in, so I'm going to let you I guys see go that. first. No, my, 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 my point is a little people. bit different. Um, so I'm, gonna, I, I'm thinking a little bit more of the physics of... Uh, well, the acoustics, rather, well, the physics of acoustics or the acoustics of perform performing um, as a group on a stage. For a chamber a chamber group, which you got, what, like four or five people? Or it's like string quartet, mm-hmm. quintet, yeah. um, in a small brass group. Um, you're physically closer together when you're performing like that. And usually you're sort of semi-circular enough that you're always, everyone's visible to everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. So by the time... If you're playing by if you're if you're playing along, I mean you're you're able to vis- first of all you're able to visually interpret the clues from whoever is leading, and there will always be somebody who's leading a performance yes. in a group or whatever. Even if it's just if that even if that person switches at any one time, there is one person who is going to they're in charge assert of- musical dominance somehow through yeah. body language mm-hmm. or through them being the people who are keeping time or they're trying to queue up two people who have to come in at the same time or anything. Like that. There'll always be somebody in charge, and that that can work for a small group. And then by the time if whoever somebody's played a note, um, even if you're not looking, by the time they play and it reaches the ears of another person and they play based off that, the sounds are roughly in sync. And so it can, it can kind of work and things don't tend to slow down. Whenever you're playing with a, a larger group and they're spread over a physically larger area, the role of the conductor becomes so much more important because the latency from the sound reaching one side of the orchestra to the other for somebody who can't see the person who made the sound who is relying on that to think that they're in time by if if they're say like say 20 meters maybe we'd say apart mm-hmm. by the time they hear that noise and start playing their note the sound from the first instrumentalist is already 20 meters out into the audience well 20 20 meters yeah 20, 20 meters yeah it'll be the same yeah i'm trying not to confuse time and distance here i swear <laughs> i know what i'm talking about i have a degree um, <laughs> And um, so what what tends to happen with large groups that are spaced out, not necessarily even larger groups, but groups that are spaced out is over time, they're going to get slower and slower and slower because they're mm-hmm. trying to play in time with subconsciously. They're going to try and play in time with each other with what they hear because music is acoustic. You hear music. So even yeah. if you, even in times when you know better, you don't know how much earlier to play a note. Yeah. Unless you're really, really good and really, really good people can do this. But you have a conductor who's Robert's the, got his he, finger up. He does, but I don't want to. I want to finish first because then he can, he can speak with all of. <laughs> don't want to let Robert finger you. Just, well, it's just in case I've said something wrong. Now I want to make sure to get it all out. Either <laughs> dig myself, dig, dig myself out of the hole or into it properly. It's going to be one of the two. Um, yeah, you, have yeah, a, you have a conductor who's a central visual point and like light basically over the over the course of the distances involved in musical performance is basically like immediate. Um, 
if there is the trust and the confidence in the trust in the conductor and the confidence of the player to play with the trust of the conductor to say no, no matter what they hear, um, the conductor is sort of able to hear everything as it's going out and is going to know when things are in, in sync and when things aren't and are able to say you need to hurry up or you need to, geez, would you please slow down? And it can sort of tie a physically separate group together, which is like super important. And the bigger the stage, this is why tech rehearsal is so important at a venue you're playing at with the same conductor. So the conductor can hear how how big the hall is, how much they have to, are going to have to try and mm-hmm. wrangle an orchestra. And the orchestra knows just how out of sync they're going to think they sound with other instruments in that particular space because performance is inherently tied to the space. Oh, I was happy about that. <laughs> I am pleased and I'm about to be shredded. Take another wee glass of wine. I <laughs> think you deserve it. So hit me with it. What was wrong about that? <laughs> so, okay, so here's the thing. Even no matter how small the group is, sound will be late, even in a quartet, mm-hmm. even in a string quartet. Um, in chamber groups, they aren't going off of what they hear; they go off of what they see. Um, so it's not the fact that they're listening. I mean, obviously they're listening because you always have to listen. You have to listen to be in tune. You have yes. to listen to create a blend in your section. Absolutely, but. In chamber groups, you're not listening for time. You're watching the first violin. Yeah. You're watching the leader because that's their job. So they're a chamber ensemble. So they're massive, like massive chamber orchestras that have, you know, they're bigger than the IVGO. That well, uh, that's what I was going to say. Can, when Robert, yeah, they when can see. David was saying about them being smaller. Like the chamber orchestras I were in were like six first violins, six seconds, yeah. three violas, six cellos. They were bigger, and it, to me, it, you needed a conductor in front of that. But we all knew to watch each other for who had the tune. <laughs> right. So it's always the first violin is going to be the person who leads, like first chair violin. That's why they're in the front. That's so yeah. funny so because I mean, like that's the complete opposite of playing with a band. It's like the guy at the back is in charge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, because in a band you're not watching, you're not looking for visual. In a band you're listening back because that is all audio related. Like mm-hmm. um, that's why in like wind bands when you tune, like the whole idea behind. Um, so my professor, my professor at Cal State, um, wrote a book on. Uh, wind band tuning recently like that was a sabbatical while i was there my first semester and um his whole theory is that you tune to the lowest instrument in the back who has the melody that is who you listen to and it's because of the way that um it's the way that sound works and pushes forward but by listening back wait was it back or forward no, 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 wait, hold on. What, you while you're thinking, I was, ac- I was actually talking about um, guitar bands no, I don't that remember. I definitely also play in. Right, no, I, I'm aware. <laughs> it's just the drummer, the drummer, just, the drummer is like, even if he goes, even if he can't even stand up, um, which is like fairly common with drummers, like, you have to follow his beat. <laughs> yeah. It's the same concept, though. It really is. Playing in an ensemble is the same concept all the way across. Um, but yeah, no chamber orchestras. You follow you follow your first violin. They're the one who's going to be cueing you in um, at the beginning of the piece. They're the ones who set the tempo. Um, and even in when they're rehearsing, you know, it's your section leaders who take who take the the brunt of the work at that point when there isn't a conductor. Now, yeah. you discuss the the physical role of a conductor very well. Oh. So good on you, David. It's a compliment. Well I like it. I would like some more of those. He's learned from his lessons. Take a sip of wine. You've learned a bit. I think I, d- I think I need to reward myself here. Victory sip. Oh my god, Keith, how full you, is that glass? Yeah, no, Robert, you oh, missed I wanted that. to finish it. So busy talking. Oh, wow. He poured all. Th- <laughs> I really hope that the microphone picked up the pour sound because that's <laughs> going in in silence at the end. <laughs> because I was watching it going, that's not going to fit. Somebody's taking the glider home. No, Do mother <laughs> mother comes to collect me. You're going to ride your mother home? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. oh, she listens oh. to this. I'm so oh. sorry. David. Oh, so am I. No, David, that, that's, you... <laughs> no that, that's not actually fair. I have, I have met both of Kate's parents and they are the most wonderful people and 
Oh, I feel awful now. See, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a good Northern Ireland anytime. joke. Anytime. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. This is the running joke yeah. of the entire the entire podcast. There are only yeah. listeners. So, for You're context for the listeners, anytime. this is the first one we're recording after um, the first episode actually came out, uh, and they were sitting listening to the <laughs> to the first episode, and we're pretty complimentary for um, to the parents then. Oh, have you not listened to it, David? Because you're looking very shocked. Um, I haven't listened to the whole thing. No. Oh, David. Um, it, it no, into right. Okay, so I quit my job last week and I've had a lot of work to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. we were very complimentary Fair. to them and it's just sort of gone downhill ever since. So I'm hoping they... <laughs> just like this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Robert, Robert, bring us back to topic, please. <sighs> so like we have a time limit, guys, and I'm trying to be good about this. Otherwise, yeah. Lisa's going to fly to L.A. and kick my ass. Um, <laughs> right. So, conductors. Right. What do we do? What do we actually do? Yeah. Okay. Um, Good question. So, the whole idea behind having a conductor is that it's not like, yes, we keep time. Yes, we, we rehearse people. But really, like, the whole idea is it's our musical interpretation that gets played. We are the... Uh, I can never find a good word for this, but we are like the, we are the, the, the not the patron, but like the, the guardian of the score of the composition that we're playing. And it's our job to interpret it and make, make our interpretation happen in front of us. Right. So, mm -hmm when when you're watching an orchestra and you're watching a conductor you're like oh that looks easy that's because that's five percent of what we do is the concert oh very yeah. much like, so i say it's such a small part and rehearsals are probably only about 50 percent on top of that all of our work is really the studying and the score the score work that we do before we even get into a rehearsal hall and i will say i'm really bad at that part <laughs> only because at one point I was doing a concert almost every week and so to find time to go study before getting into a rehearsal before going into a show and trying to like keep you know I had a folder that was probably about mm, I'd say about three inches thick of scores that I was working on oh at God. the time <laughs> trying to keep all of this between four ensembles five ensembles something ridiculous and trying to keep everything going and like you know all of that at the same time um i'm sure i'm seeing keith react and i'm sure he made a, a thick joke no that was that somewhere. was david looking at me and we we both <laughs> we both were connected for just a split second and we both knew we both knew it was not a thick joke you're both gross <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so it's like that's that's our job our job is yeah. to um, the best way I've been told is, and there was a Emer Noon, who we all know and love, mm -hmm. um, had a great uh, analogy for it, and now I can't remember the whole thing. I've got a better one. it's kind of like, what? If you've ever listened to a tune and thought, God, that needs more cowbell. As a conductor, you can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even let Robert get his out, though. Oh. Like... Uh, he was he was done. was giving him time while he remembered it. I think the wine's been taken a hold now. <laughs> Just gonna take a knife and twist it. Um, no. Um, so it's kind of like in olden times when you used to have to light candles for light. Um, we are the candle, but then the orchestra is that mirror that you put behind it to really like right. So that the that the the candlelight will bounce off of and go out into the room yeah that's that's the best analogy i've heard so far of what we do i do like that i like that a lot here's one thing i'm gonna ask you is go on this is it's gonna sound a little bit stupid but i mean you're a viola player so we're how's used that, to how's that any different mm. oh my goodness viola jokes take... i definitely oh take his take his this was much better thank you very much that's yeah. what she anyway. says maybe Oh, God. And, right, anyway, <laughs> the question I'm going to ask is, how, is there a way, of, well, obviously, Robert, you do a master's in this, but is there a way to practice 
conducting? Yes, yes there is. And I want to I want to hear what Keith does. <laughs> 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 I stand either in front of a mirror or in front of like some recording, a camera, that's the word, um, and either basically watch myself conduct the you know, music going on in the e- earphones um, and then I watch it back and, oh, Robert's making faces. I don't know what's happening right here. Sorry, so I'm... As some people know on this recording, I'm in the middle of a PhD proposal, and I just had a fucking breakthrough. Give me a second. <laughs> we'll, we'll need to bleep that. <laughs> how, how, how does it feel to be Robert's muse? No, we're allowed one per episode. It's it's weird. Um, but yeah, it's basically a case of um, a conduct through the piece to actually you know get to know the piece, obviously. Um, but then I watch back myself actually conducting um, so I can actually know from you know, a player's perspective if it's actually clear what I'm trying to put across to them. Um, so if I'm, if there's a bit like, you know, if there's a bit in the trumpets, for example, um, I should look over to that direction so that I'm looking at the trumpets. Um, right, okay. But... You know, if I re- if I watch back the recording and at that specific part, I'm still just head down like ooh like that. For the audio listeners, I waved my hands a bit. Um, then I know to sort of, <laughs> <laughs> I know to like you know look up and make sure to make eye contact with where the trumpets should be. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. basically like you know, you watch yourself do it so you know where to sort of um. Focus on, I think is the right way to put it. It does sound a little bit, like, I'm sure to some people who are listening, it might sound a little bit silly to be doing, like, I look at myself in a mirror. <laughs> oh like, yeah, it, it, really it is the weirdest but, like, thing. It, even, even as, like, when I'm performing, like, I'm working towards my diploma, so I'm like, doing the back cello suite, and that's all solo. I'm thinking to myself, I have to have a stage presence. So I'm filming that every time I'm practicing Mm -hmm. and watching that back for in terms of my actual stage performance. So I can understand from that aspect how that can help. David, what do you do? I was going to ask, I'm keen to know how much of an emphasis you put on the actual physical performance from what the audience are going to be seeing. That's a good way to dodge the question of how much no, you no, practice. I, I, go, I go back to it, but um, because I, I know personally, I come concert time, I am definitely a little bit more... I'm, I'm aware that there are people uh, people are watching me as much, as, the, as much, if not more, than the actual orchestra. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They're listening to the orchestra, but they're watching mm-hmm. me. Oh, no, so, I always find... Yeah, you, you got to put on a show. If the conductor <laughs> is fun to watch, I have more fun listening. Uh, like, there was... What was the one... Um, we organised the orchestra outing to the orchestra we were playing. It was like movie stuff. Oh, the it was on Halloween. Cri- it was a Christmas oh, one. Oh, yeah. It was on Halloween, I think, wasn't yeah. it? We, yeah, we went to... No, it was a... Anyway, oh, was it? the orchestra went on a thing to the Ulster Orchestra. Um, and whoever was the conductor that night was just, like, certain pieces in particular, he was just, like, jumping around. He was obviously doing it just for show rather than you know for the actual orchestra's benefit but it was i don't know about you i I thought that was like really entertaining i can't remember his full name but is that your fella Raphael? no it wasn't him although he's he's good to watch as well he's a brilliant conductor actually i I don't know the word the name christopher bell is sort of ringing a bell as it were that Uh, sounds kind of thank you very much yeah but isn't i'm pretty sure chris bell is a violinist true I have no idea. No, that's Joshua Bell. No, I don't remember. Anyway, in terms of like practicing that, obviously maybe your conducting style determines how you practice. Yeah, Would I mean, that be true. I mean, okay, so at some point, everybody who's listening needs to go watch uh, Bernstein conduct uh, the Overture to Candide. Okay. Because you will see. Uh, a version of his conducting this so um i mean it's raw is what it is because that's that's who he was 
but like there's parts of it that are just so like he gets big and he's dancing and he's having fun but there's parts where he's just so reserved and just everything is right in on his chest like there's no arm movement whatsoever you can't see a thing and you can't even see a downbeat and that's fine i mean your style is going to change based off of who you're conducting and who you're working with um amateur groups an amateur is not a bad thing amateur means that we do it for the love of the music it doesn't like i mean you're the one who you're the one who's emphasizing that yeah (laughs) amateur means we don't get paid for it right but amateur also means you do it for the love of it like yeah Yeah. i i read something about this the other day i'm like that is great um yeah you and me both buddy (laughs) right final question for you doll wait i I wasn't (laughs) done yet that's a shame sorry (laughs) (laughs) yes well it's three minutes to an hour here and sit down you can cut stuff out it's fine no, but I don't like cutting things because the flow of it is. There will be. I'll tell you how in a minute. Go on, I Robert. I was going to say <laughs> this bit's definitely not being cut. No. <laughs> I was going to say, um, with professionals, you don't have to keep a beat. They do it themselves. You get to shape the musical line rather than mm-hmm. having to go. Okay, here's one. Make sure you're down on one. Like they're going to do it. So yeah, yeah you're. The style changes with who you're about to step in front of. And so your practice yeah. changes based off of that as well. Okay, now you can continue on. <laughs> sorry, Robert. I am so sorry for interrupting you. Um, it will probably happen again in every single episode we ever do. Not being a good night for the viewers. are going to get shit lines for me from now on. I know, the viewers are just never getting anything ever again. Whole or notes. Just getting... Whole notes. Or demi semi quavers for the rest of time. No, just your part though. Just first chair violin. Oh yeah, you're gonna get this. Everyone else <laughs> yeah. for the normal parts, listeners, but whole not notes you. Or s- not semi quavers. I forgot. Briefs. Demi briefs. I completely forgot wow. that word. Oh my goodness. Hello, wine, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Keith just got demoted. This is why we're getting to the end before he drinks the end of that glass of wine and is lying nah, on the floor. let him go. He's so, we like to drink final tea. question. No, no. Don't listen to him. Doing Keith? It. He's doing it. Uh, he did it. <clears throat> this isn't fair. It's 1 p.m. here. I can't drink. <laughs> Not without I'm attitude. drinking it's 5 coffee. 5 p.m. somewhere. All right, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Whew. Final question. I'm going to come to each of you individually. And I'm going to start with David because he hasn't said a little bit in a while. Okay. Favorite piece to conduct. Oh. Oh. Wow. You should have um, thought about this before because it's on the plan. Um, is it? Oh, oh, oh goodness. Is it? Oh, it is. <laughs> Literally plan. right at the very bottom. Oh, it is. Um. Jeez. It's okay. You can say I... what I've arranged. I there there's kind of maybe why would we do that? <laughs> I like I like the lo- I tend to like the longer pieces. Um, I would say my I'm kind of torn now between the Final Fantasy VI opera mm-hmm. and Kingdom Hearts. The aria is better. Yeah. The aria is part of it. Um. Harry because there, there, there's there's so much there's so much in those um there's yeah it, it covers a very wide spectrum and there's there's an awful i'm not gonna lie there's an awful lot of chance for me to be visibly animated and yeah. i do enjoy yeah. being rather visibly animated at performance time um, when but like i'm gonna i'm gonna ask everybody this question but during let's go for the opera what part is the most difficult to try and keep in time or get through a section of there's some um operational difficulties with the opera in that there are three vocalists over there yeah. behind you and they're they're yeah. not looking at you they can't see you and that's the orchestra like it's even the sound latency penalty i was talking about earlier is like even double because it's got to come from them past you to the audit to the the orchestra and back out again and mm-hmm. you're having to try and physically but visibly control an orchestra to stop them listening to the main theme that they are trying to support so that it keeps together. And that, that that's yeah difficult. And they're bouncing around the room and doing all sorts of well. So people are obviously watching them and then you're like, would you stop watching them and please watch me so you know when your beat's going to be? 
Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Very. So I, I, that's probably the most difficult part about that. Yeah, I remember whenever we did it in Lou Church, that last gig that we did. Um, I'm the first person to sing in that, and there was in that uh, venue there was like a balcony right at the very back, uh, and I decided my first bit it's going to be right up there, and just I remember <laughs> the first couple of things I sang, I just saw David from behind like. Where is he? And just I, I now understand the absolute panic that went through <laughs> your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I will always, for an entry, I will always try and find whoever is performing and do like the choral thing and sing the first line or at least give some sort of visual indication to say, this is whenever I'm going to give the beat to the orchestra that they are playing and you should be at a similar time. But then you've also got to be a little bit later than vis- visually, so mm-hmm. <laughs> I have to move my left hand and my right hand and it's hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moving on. No, it's Keith. not. Don't I can't say anything about that. Trying to be a piano player is not being this one of my strong <laughs> points because this hand's doing one thing, this is doing one thing, and I read in auto class, so I'm transposing in two separate directions. But anyway, Keith, why don't you tell us about your favorite piece to conduct? So I'm kind of the same as David in that, like, uh, I see. I I know what I'm going to say, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. The harder and the longer that it is, the better. Um, <laughs> Players uh, would disagree. <laughs> like, because, like you were saying earlier about the Spider Man piece, and as much as hard as that is for the actual, well, especially for the string players, because that's just constant yeah. uh, triplet quavers. For the conductor, that's just one, yep. two, three, four, da, 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 da. We're at the end. Okay, we'll stop. Um, yeah. um, but. There's a couple that I really like that we play. Um, there's the Witcher one that I mentioned earlier, um, which because that has the yeah. alternating six four five four bars at the start, so you really have to just be focusing on that. Um, and then it goes into I think six eight, maybe I haven't looked at it for ages to be honest. Um, and then it goes into like mm-hmm. th- like a fast three four, so it's one in the bar of essentially. Um, so it's not really normal time signatures, as it were, in terms of like, you know, just a normal four four or a slow three four. Um, but one I also really like is the chrono cross chrono trigger one that we do, um, because that yeah. has a lot of changes in the time, um, but especially that section sort of in the middle, uh, where. I'm just gonna sing it because I can't describe it. So it's like da 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 da, blah, da 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 da, ba ba ba. Oh yeah. Ba da ba da ba da, ba da ba da ba da, ba da 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 ba da, and then it goes on. Um. I just wanted to keep going. I was like, it's so beautiful. I could sing it all. I'll be honest with you. It's it's that it's whenever whenever you whenever you're you're holding the strings for that. But oh, that's so yeah. good. That's that's there's there that feels powerful. So that's the type of thing. I will say to all to whoever is conducting that that is the like I do. I've been trained just watch the conductor. Like yeah. you probably are always looking at me, looking at you during concerts. That's the one time where it's like I just watch the note. Yeah. I'm just looking at you. It's like I can't not look at you because <laughs> well, I that, don't know when that's gonna be. Well, that that cycles back around to what Robert was saying earlier about how it's the conductor's interpretation yeah. of how a piece should be played because you know especially for things like that when there's a pause it's how long is a pause it's not written you know this pause yeah. and that other should a movie, movie time code this pause is 4.786 seconds long you know it's mm-hmm. doesn't happen in well i mean yeah no, no. not in the kind of stuff we do so it is going to be a lot of it's going to be feel and sometimes we'll be like oh the atmosphere of this gig is really good so let's just milk it a little bit and take it slightly slower yeah. than usual yeah. Uh, no, but like that part in particular, you can really let your own interpretation run wild. Um, so like, whenever I do it, I've got my very specific way. Like as you said, Lisa, just sort of watch me and play the notes whenever I wave my hands a bit. Um, yeah. But like whenever, say, like David or Robert takes it over, they have a, they may have a completely different uh interpretation of how it should sound. Um, which obviously is you know. Worse than mine because, uh, yeah, <laughs> different. Let's say different. I have words for you, <laughs> and we're not going to do that on the podcast because I could rip your conducting in half. 
Oh, that's Moving not. Moving on. <laughs> Robert, let's come to you. What would be Hi. your favorite piece of conduct? Um, and I think I've got to make a guess in my head, and I'm hoping I'm right. Well, you're going to think it's Zelda. Yes. Um, no, it's no? not. No? Which one are you? Th- Wait. Okay. Really? Um. Um. <laughs> as much as I love that piece, it's a pain in the butt. To, it's annoying to conduct because it's just a three, yeah. and no one ever gets to pick up right. Um. No, I was gonna say uh, my favorite piece is basically anything that shakes the walls. Okay, because my guess was. Hold on, I'm not done yet. I'm not. Done. Oh no, let, let her guess. Let her guess. Let her guess. Let her guess. Come on, I want to hear. I want to hear. Guess. 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 It's like a bunch of drunk lords over there. Good lord. I need more drink. No, you don't. All right, go ahead. Last thing you needed. I was going to guess that it was Pokemon gonna catch them all. Now, see, that's a really fun one. And the reason why is because as soon as you get going, you don't have to do anything, especially <laughs> yeah. if there's a, especially if there's a drum, a drum kit going in the back, because the only part where you actually have to do anything is during the bridge, during the eighth notes and the strings, just to make sure it doesn't slow down. That's all you have to do. Oh, no, Other you, than no, that, no, no, you, 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 you have to point to the guitar player. That's very oh, important. Yeah, you have to get, <laughs> yeah, and you have to give the guitar player a nice, And it has nice, to be a uh, very dramatic point. Oh, yeah, it's that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I I do it differently. I give it a little bit more power. But um, no, I was going to say, my, I, so like when I started taking, when I started playing organ, the reason I wanted to do it was for the power. I wanted okay. to play an instrument. Are we going to make the powerful organ an juke, or are we just going to go past that? I was going to be very silent. Keith, shut up. You. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Keith, just shut up. Let um, Robert finish. Because I wanted to play an instrument that had the power to shake the building. Fair. And so that's kind of come over into my conducting as well. I like the pieces that just, like, you know, the whole building just... Whoa, yeah. At, underneath it, you know? So, like... um anything from like league of legends world of warcraft like those yeah. big massive pieces with the giant drums and the 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 crazy loud crazy low brass like that kind of stuff is what excites me the most um like i remember doing um summoner's call no the challengers no yeah the challengers from league of legends at um uh in cork at at ucc um and having those having those two ringer trombone players in that piece oh now i remember yeah. that oh, do you say you don't remember no, that no now i remember i know exactly the bit yeah. that you're talking about First because piece. we had two very very good very very mm. confident very very competent as well as confident trombone players and that oh that was and great was your, your dad wasn't there for that oh. one wasn't he he was unable to attend, and we wish him all the best for the future. <laughs> <laughs> we also had a ringer trumpet player there too. Uh, he was also pretty ringer pretty or assistant. Uh, whatever. Well, I mean, yeah, he played all the bits I could, and so like fair play to him. <laughs> oh, he was um, good. He was. He, he was. He was lovely. Actually, he was a very nice man. I remember him. He... Me and his mother are friends on Facebook still. Like he's great. His mom is a nice, very nice woman. Thanks your so right for say? your Northern Irish pass. She's no, not going to get him into Northern Ireland. Ireland. This is if he's in Cork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. In, <laughs> in World of Warcraft, isn't there like a really dramatic speed change somewhere in the middle of that piece? Or am I, is it a key change? I can't remember. I haven't played it in so long. There is a very massive time signature change. That's what it is. Because at the beginning, it's like, I want to say 12-8 yeah. at the beginning. And then there's a huge... There's supposed to be a really big like timpani roll, um, bass drum roll into uh oh it goes back into twelve eight. Does it not go into five four? Or seven four, seven four. There is a seven four bit yeah, in there. Like all all yeah. of the best the best songs of war are in seven four. Right. And that's because they have the they are. the four three feel to it. Um, yeah. it's the way that they they place the drums and the downbeat within them that cause it to have that very typical 
World of Warcraft sound. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So anything like that, like yeah. you can tell because I like get into like a power stance and just all the conducting comes from yeah. the gut instead of like up here. <laughs> and that's and honestly, David, you'll know this. That's the reason why I made us get a podium. <laughs> yeah. Um... That is the reason. Not because you guys are short. It's because I want to be able to use the full breadth of like conducting space, which you can't do if you're standing on the floor. Okay, no, legit, because me and Keith are actually quite short. We are we are not we are not very but tall also, people. But also, I want it to be taller because after after those two weeks of shows that we did last August, my shoulders were killing me. Yeah. So it's just like I wanted to be taller, but also yeah. you guys needed it too. Welcome to so, my life. Slight, slightly selfish reasons. Come to the short boy yeah. podcast. <laughs> short boy. <laughs> I don't know what that's like. I'm six three. Size doesn't matter. And we've come full circle. Yes. On that note, thank you very much, the conducting boys, for joining me. I have one final thing I need you to do for me. Nope. I need you to whip out your buttons. In front of everyone. Uh, um, okay, so mine, mine's in the orchestra kit. Don't um, want mine. I mean, I could go. Have you a spare one? Do you want mine? I really love your baton because my, mine is literally got, buried in the, in the bottom. See, the, do you want to if, if you can see, Keith, there's a, there's a box over there with a white thing sticking out of it over in the corner. That's that's the, the orchestra is music. Is this the YouTube exclusive? This is the, this YouTube, is the exclusive. YouTube exclusive. I'm very sorry it's, to all the audience. Oh, no, don't. don't I'll I take one of, your, one of yours because, like, you're not getting it out of there. That's... I'm too wine drunk to do that. I mean, I, it's... I, I think uh, you need a degree in archaeology at this point. I think using the mollard baton case over there. That's very nice, <laughs> yes. Yes. So was, I yeah. I yeah. went to order. Do you want the coffee see through one or the actual one you can see on the video? The actual one you can see. Oh, on the video. okay. I actually went to buy a mallard baton um, at the start this of the lockdown. My lovely, my lovely case. But Hello. it was closed due to COVID, and then orchestra hasn't been playing, and it's broken my heart. Well, this is my purple headed stick. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> my final thing I'm gonna ask <laughs> is: Is the baton more important? Than just using your hand? No. Uh, no. Nope. It's essentially a twig. <laughs> They're totally you could, invalid. It's, totally you conduct, invalid. You could honestly go to the park, pick up a twig, and that's that is good enough yeah. because it's all. I mean, the baton is for visibility from a distance, really. Is it just yep. to make you feel like you're making magic, like it's a wand? I no, we are I, making I, magic. I actually uh, pref- feel a lot more comfortable without a baton at all. Because I, aside from Robert's personal lessons, I've never been taught how to properly use one. And actually, I prefer to not use a baton either. I've gotten more comfortable without one. Why do you even have them still around? Because people Uh, at the very back can't see without a white thing. (laughs) (laughs) That, actually, that's exactly why. Because the orchestra keeps getting bigger. Yeah. And so you need one. Yeah. But you'll see me during during soft parts or um more lyrical music, I'll drop it. I won't use it anymore. And it's it's funny actually because you get you get different sizes of baton as well. So you'll get quite short ones, which are more for like chamber chamber choirs and stuff in smaller groups where well, you don't need the length of visibility. Well Okay, so here are two. Broadly speaking, not like specifically because there is also a preference of oh, length there and counterweight. There's and, like a pretty significant difference in those. Yeah, oh, these are the two that I that. used through college, and um, the big difference is that this one, uh, as I'm holding it up for people who are on the podcast, um, this one's a lot heavier than right. this one, and it's also longer by probably about an inch, and it's a completely different material. This one's fully wood. This one is not fiberglass, but it's some sort of composite material. And there is just a huge difference in control and um, a huge difference in control and the drag of the baton and all of this. Like there's just your stick can do so much for your conducting, but it can also hamper you so much. Well, that's so I, I, I just genuinely thought like you could do it with a pencil. Like, oh, you could. Oh, you can. I have done in you the can. orchestra before when I definitely didn't forget my baton. 
<laughs> I, 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 love, I love how this one that you've, you've given me, Keith, says King David on it. That was the first one I ever got. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Those <laughs> are the worst. That is a terrible baton. Yeah, that was the first one I ever got. And I got it free from the band that I was conducting at the time. Is that the one with the cork handle? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah no, those are terrible. Yeah, no, I got this one. Yeah, the 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 Mollard Lancios are actually quite interesting because of the center point is behind, yeah, like in in the gri- in or the not the gri- in in the the handle itself. You it's mean the tang? The tang. Yeah. Okay, Mister American. I know how to do knives. <laughs> <laughs> but Perfectly yes, balanced as all the ocean. Yeah, but it, it's it's ba- balanced, it's balanced further, further back from the point the the exact point where the stick bit starts. Yeah, it's that's like actually here. really interesting because that's going to cause. Um, that's going to cause the tip of the baton to rise. Um, it's, it actually, well, for me anyway, for me, I don't know about you, Keith, but it makes the tip very, very light. I mean, yeah, I haven't that's, conducted that's for about nine months at this stage, so I'm, yeah, sure, why not? You know, and it's, it's, it's <laughs> the different. the heavier one I have, the the grip, the fulcrum, or not the fulcrum, that's the grip, the tang is a little bit forward, and the tip is heavier, and that causes a much more... Um, everything turns into legato because you're dragging the tip around. This is a very interesting topic for somebody who knows nothing about this. <laughs> <laughs> but th- th- I mean, th- th- this, this is the kind of data, these are the things that you, you don't really think that you need to think about until you actually start conducting and you start using the tools. This has been the most heated discussion of the night. Is well, let me put it, Let me put it this way. If there's anything that you need to take away from any, conduct, any baton, uh, baton conversation is that your baton needs to be balanced. Yeah. And it needs to be weighted, which is why mollard mollards are really good for like a low priced balanced baton. Low priced. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, yeah. have you a trust fund? <laughs> How much are mollards? They should be like what, 30 bucks? I think this one was more expensive. I mean, I got it for Christmas, so I didn't have to pay for it. Thank you, parents, yet again. How much are you paying for a baton? <laughs> well, it's also, they also charge, I think it's like 30 to $50 international shipping yeah. to us. Um, oh. Also, yeah. well, I mean, yeah, I mean the diff- there's Mollard, different series. You can but... get a Mollard P-Series baton on guitarcenter.com for $32. Guitar Center, sorry, some of us are too European. Just to say. looking for uh... a... <laughs> This podcast is not sponsored by Guitar Center, but we're looking for the sponsors, please and thank I mean, you. I am, I am definitely looking. I, 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 <laughs> I, I would love some more music man basses um, if they could make their way over here. So it's, it's. I am on their website. It's seventy dollars plus shipping. I'm probably. Oh plus, my god. Probably plus tax for, because like that's the American wait, for way what? for the Lancio for series. Who? Mollard for the la- oh. their Lancia ones, so the fancy, the fancy, fancy ones. Although they do do a, a <laughs> glow, in, glow, glow in the black. Do do they do they do do a glow in the, the the dark color one that I also want to get for for the crack. Don't, don't do it. Stop um, me. Uh, I will say my I've got two batons from Pagu in Buffalo, New York, and those I think cost about eighty each. Those are the heavy ones, and then. Um, the one I use constantly now is from Guy Lake, and I actually didn't pay anything for that because what had happened was so his batons are about forty or fifty, but what had happened was um, somebody ordered it through the conducting classes at Cal State, and they never picked it up. So like we would buy, we would order in bulk, like place your order, place your order of whatever you want with them, and you get a discount, and they all get shipped to the school. And then, you know, like it handed out in class. Well, no one picked this one up and it turned out to be the perfect length and the color that I wanted. And so I'm, my, my conducting professor is like, here, try this one because we were having issues with the heavier batons I was using. And he's, he's like, here, try this. And he's like, okay, that one's yours because no one picked it up and I've had it in my office for a year. So uh, there you go. I have just checked, and Emer Noon is a Pagu artist. It looks like so. You definitely, that's not why you bought that. <laughs> no, that's not why I bought this one at all. <laughs> On that's that not her baton. Very, very expensive note. Where the two boys who are sitting in the room together poured themselves another glass of wine. I'm gonna cut this off before Slaunch they it. write themselves off. So <laughs> thank you very much for joining Honestly, me. Honestly, we're too late thank for that. You. That's the most amazing outro I've ever heard. <laughs> Thank you to anybody who tuned in to this episode. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you're more interested in conducting. I know I am. And we shall see you on the next episode of Side Stage with the IBGO. 
Do you want to conduct a site? <laughs> you may want to just no. re-record that whole outro session yeah. <laughs> because we're blasting all over the end. Of it. Um, I don't care it? at this point. Goodbye. <laughs> See you later, guys. Um, <laughs> <cup>. <laughs>